This week on Fishette, John outlines a surefire early season pattern for spinning up hungry walleye, crappie, and pike on easy to fish, fast warming waters. there. Got him. Oh, yeah. Feels like what we're looking for. He's not fighting like a pike. Feels like a walleye. You know, this is so simple what we're doing here. What do we got here? Ooh, look at this. It's not a walleye. It's a big crappie. What a great bonus. Look at the size of that crop. Holy smokes. We'll take that any day of the week. That is a giant crappie. Wow. I'll tell you what, if we were catching crappies like that nonstop, we'd just turn this into a crappie show. That's a giant fish. That's a really cool crappie, man. Look at that. That's a big fish right there. And she's 13, 14 inches. That's a great fish. I'm gonna let him go, but wow, that's cool. We're chasing walleyes today, but he's a great bonus. That's one of the things about fishing small lakes like this, is you just really never know what you're gonna get. I mean, there's there's gonna be times you're gonna catch fish that you weren't really planning on. One of the things I'll say about fishing sometimes is we get so hung up on going out and catching a certain species. And <coughs> you know what, I do that too. I, I, I think it's pretty cool though to just go fishing and just have a rod bend, you know, and, and not know what's at the end of it. And that's one of the neat things about these smaller lakes is that's gonna happen. It's gonna happen more often than it's gonna happen, say on a big body of water when we're all fishing deep and we've pinpointed a bunch of fish and usually there are certain species. There's one right there. Got him. Feels like pretty good fish. Grab that net because this might be the species we're looking for here. Feels like it. Yep, there's what we're looking for right there. Look at that. That's exactly what we're chasing today. Early summer walleyes that are biting spinners earlier than most people would think that they're gonna. And here's why we're on a small lake today. When you're on a small lake like what we're on here, the water warms up a heck of a lot faster. And when you get that warm water earlier, what happens is these fish, they just get a little bit ahead of the routine that the fish are on on bigger water. And so often we look at, it's a 17 and a half inch fish. And the lake I'm on today, gotta be under 17 to keep. But here's the thing about what we're doing is most of the time guys are thinking about big water and they're basing their walleye locations and their walleye movement and their walleye presentations at this time of the year on big water. But here's the thing, the lake I'm on, 66.8 degrees right now, okay? So we're pushing 67 degrees today. And what's happened is you look at a lot of the large lakes, they're still in the upper 50s, headed into the low 60s right now, and the fish are just not on a big spinner bite yet. It's coming, it's not that far off. But what happens is these small lakes, they transition a little bit quicker, and that's what's happening here. And that's why we're pulling spinners. Now, I'm not two crawlers yet. We're not, we're not there yet. There's no way that they're gonna start going crazy on crawlers quite yet. So I'm pulling spinners with minnows. But I'll tell you what, this tactic is just deadly on these small lakes. When you're in this scenario where, where the water's warming up here quicker than it is on those big lakes. Oh, there's one right there. Just switch spots. Catching a lot of pike on that last spot. There might be pike over here too, but it's kind of one of them deals where sometimes it makes sense to just change and see if you can find something that's a little different. That's all I did. I mean, I'm on the same type of spot. I looked for something on the map that was the same. 
and it is real similar. Oh, nice eye. Look at this. Good change. <laughs> All I did is pick a spot that looks real, real similar. It's just, again, just an extension of shoreline structure. I'm in eight, nine feet of water again. Same thing. Nothing different. And that's going to be real close to being a keeper. That's awesome. But, you know, these locations, when you really get down to it, are simple to find. They're on... They're on these maps nowadays. I mean, it's, it's so easy to find this. That's a great fish, I'll bet you. He's gonna be a real close one to making it to the dinner table tonight. But that is why every now and then, heck yeah, that's a, that is a keeper fish. That's awesome. We're gonna take him home for dinner tonight. But here's, what's, here's the thing about this. All I'm doing is looking for those areas. I wanted to stay in a similar depth, okay? That's first, and here's why I wanted to stay in a similar depth. I've kind of got it dialed into a pattern as to where I think there are a lot of fish, and they seem to be in that eight to 10 feet of water. So the way I'm set up here today, what I'm using is a real simple rig. I'm using a quarter ounce Lindy rig sinker, okay? All I'm doing is I'm fishing a little Joe, a, a little Joe minnow spinner, okay? This is called a walleye spinner, actually, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm going in the mouth, I'm coming out the gill, and then I'm going back up through the body of that fish, so, or of that minnow. So the hook is protruded right out his back. Now that minnow is gonna swim pretty straight. He's gonna pull pretty straight right back behind that spinner. And then it's not a whole ton of precision. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a cast out behind the boat because I know I've kind of got it dialed to where I want to be. And I know that the depth is about right for me when I set up just like that. So all I'm doing then is just getting it set, making sure I'm in the neighborhood. I'm cruising along at, you know, somewhere between 0.9, 1.1. Every now and then, you know, in the wind, I'm getting up to 1.2. But then I'm just rod holding it. And because I'm using my Lindy rig rod that's got that super soft tip, what happens when that fish hits it, he just bends it over and for the most part, they hook themselves. Now, you know, I've lost a few fish today and that, that's gonna be part of it. Anytime you're rod holder and fish, you're gonna, you're gonna end up in a scenario where you're gonna lose a couple, but the reality of it is most of the time they're gonna hook themselves and that tug of war, I talk about this a lot too, that's a pretty important deal. I want them, that walleye, to feel resistance. If he feels resistance, he's most likely gonna keep eating up it. He's not gonna just quit and say, oh geez, that's a tough minnow, I'm not gonna eat him. He's gonna keep attacking up that minnow and eventually he gets that hook, his jaw comes over that hook and there you go, there he is. that walleye looks like keeper fish too you can tell when you see that mouth open coming at you oh no it's another big crop look at that that's cool huh. look at that man i tell you i came out here to walleye fish today and we've had a we've had a decent walleye day okay hasn't been hasn't been bang up crazy great but we've gotten a couple in the live well and then you add this, a couple of these. I mean, this is just, when I say a couple, I mean, a couple giants. I mean, this is a giant crappie right here. And that's a second monster crappie that we have gotten today. We've gotten three big ones, but I've gotten two that are absolute monsters. Look at that fish. That is a giant fish. Man, I'll tell you, it just goes to show you these little lakes, they've got a little bit of everything. Get out and try one of these lakes. You know, you can pull spinners around and big fish like that. Those walleyes we've caught today, the pike, man, they're all willing to eat a spinner early as soon as you start seeing that water getting into that mid to high 60s. Holy smokes. That's a lot of fun right there.